Not only is the Star Wars franchise going to be introducing two new Star Wars trilogies, but also two live action TV series, as well as The Clone Wars Season 7. This is Mike Zero. If you guys are new to the channel, do make sure to subscribe to see future Star Wars content. And that's one great thing about Star Wars right now, is that it's not just about the movies, but they're also expanding over to television. Well, somewhat. It's going to be streamed on Disney+, Plus, which is a new streaming service that will launch during the fall of 2019. Now today I wanted to focus on one of the live action TV series that I think quite a number of people are very interested in right now and it's called Star Wars The Mandalorian by of course writer Jon Favreau. And what's great about this is that it is, yes, a post-Return of the Jedi story, three years after the events of Return of the Jedi, and to be exact, seven years after the events of the Battle of Yavin, if you want to count everything all together here. So, what's really exciting about this live-action TV series is, it, is that it actually will also connect into the sequel trilogy itself and tell us how the First Order got started. Big hints and clues as to how the First Order actually grew on its own and how it transitioned from the remnants of the Empire into the First Order being led by Supreme Leader Snoke and his forces. So I think that's another great thing about this TV series is that not only is it a post return of the Jedi story, but it's also going to have connections to the sequel trilogy and will also tell us hints and clues as to how the First Order really got started and how it became such a powerful force in the sequel trilogy against the Resistance and crew. So if we look at Jon Favreau, you know, what I love so much about this guy is that not only is he a passionate guy when it comes to Star Wars as a whole, but he really is a Star Wars fan at heart. I don't know if you guys know Favreau, but he really is a Star Wars fan when it comes to everything Star Wars, whether you're into the movies, the books, the novels, uh, the EU and Legends material, Jon Favreau is your guy. So when it comes to John writing this TV series, I think that's one of the big reasons as to why I'm looking forward to this one way over the Cassian Andor series as of right now. I feel like when it comes to the Cassian Andor series, I'm not quite sure how I feel about that just yet. They could have chose something a little bit better, something about, you know, one of the more major characters or a more established character. If we look at, you know, everything that has been happening with the Star Wars franchise, I think that Disney and Lucasfilm need to just make better choices here. After all, you know, Marvel, they're getting a Loki TV series, in case you guys did not know this, a live action Loki TV series. So if they're getting a Loki TV series when it comes to Marvel, Marvel, and then if you look at Star Wars, we're getting a Cassian Andor series. I feel like that the equivalent of a Loki TV series would be something like a Knight of Ren TV show, or maybe even a young Luke Skywalker TV show, right? So anyways, I want to really just look at this Mandalorian show, because what's so interesting about it is that not only will we actually be getting all these different tie-ins to the sequel trilogy, and hey, for all we know, maybe we will actually be, we, maybe we will actually learn more about the character of Supreme Leader Snoke. Again, there are going to be a lot of sequel trilogy connections in this series that is said to last anywhere from 7 to 10 episodes. It's a limited show in case you guys did not know, and what I mean by that is that this show only lasts so long. It's only going to be one season, give or take, and it's just going to be 7 to 10 episodes. I believe it costs $100 million, so it's really going to be a high budget project, and it's going to really be a lot of... Uh, I think it's going to have like a lot of high quality in it because they are using these real detailed sets and they really have a lot of the known actors on board. I, I'm really honestly happy that they actually got, you know, a nice cast involved with this TV series. And, you know, Pascal, by the way, being the Mandalorian, great choice in my opinion. I think he really fits the profile here. Another thing to really take note of here is that Jon Favreau has had a lot of discussions with Dave Filoni. Now, Dave Filoni is the showrunner. He is the guy who actually comes up with Star Wars Rebels content and Star Wars The Clone Wars, etc. So, the fact that these two guys had discussions with each other tells us that there is going to be a lot of connections as well to Star Wars Rebels and even The Clone Wars. So, we can expect a lot of live-action versions of certain characters from those TV shows into this new Star Wars The Mandalorian TV series. Again, like I say, you know, when it comes to the moment in which this thing actually drops on Disney+, Plus, 
and we actually see the reviews coming in. I think that if the reviews are positive and if people are really truly raving about it and giving honest reviews, I think that more people will tune in. I can totally understand why people would actually hold back and not sign up for Disney Plus immediately. It is a thing here because it is a monthly dis it is a monthly subscription. So that's one thing that Disney and Lucasfilm are going to have to work around. It is an obstacle. You know, we got to see how this streaming service even works firsthand. Um, but anyways, moving past all of this, I think that Disney and Lucasfilm are stepping in the right direction by starting off with one of the TV series to be a post-return of the Jedi era story that will not only connect to the sequels, but also give us some clues and answers as to how the First Order got rolling. Anyways guys, drop a comment below, let me know what you think about all of this in the comments, and if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all also very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.